FX presents the Indie Podcast with your host, T. Sterling Watson. Good morning, Indians. I'm T. Sterling Watson. And I'm Courtney. This is the Indu Podcast, where drive time, I'm sorry, where morning drive time meets late night talk show as we aim to entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Thank you for stopping by and pressing play. We're recording live from the south side of Wakanda in the little new Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive. Courtney, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm good, if not just mildly, just, just a little bit, just a touch annoyed. And I'm, I know, no. I'm just, I know, I'm just coming out the bat, just or, or coming out of the gate. I'm coming out of the whatever, and I'm just <laughs> already just, just getting it off my chest. Just, just have to. And this is something that you and I had talked about prior, but um, I think what we were discussing was just celebrating Christmas in, mm-hmm. in our own way, like whether that be music, just listening to you know, the the hottest jams and. Mariah Carey, Queen of Christmas, just came out with a new one with Kirk Franklin mm-hmm. and Khalid. Khalid? Khalid. Khalid, okay. Oh, I wasn't sure. I think. That's, that's why I wasn't sure and asked you or, or put a question mark <laughs> there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, check it out. It's great. I forgot what it's called, but it's already in my Christmas playlist. A longtime Indubian fans should already have that playlist like uh, favorited or followed on Spotify, but I'll post it again at some point in the future. Anyway, all of that to say, like, go ahead, listen to Christmas music whenever you feel your heart desires it. And mm-hmm. Courtney, I think you and I discussed that, like, you know, celebrate Christmas when you want. Like, it's great. It's, it's lovely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not ready to transition to Christmas just yet. I'm still celebrating fall and like Halloween, but I think I'm going to start that transition probably next week because I do when I do when I am ready to celebrate Christmas I uh, want to have like last year I put up decorations and things probably the week before Thanksgiving because I knew I wasn't going to be home for Thanksgiving and I just wanted to celebrate it as much as possible and as long as possible so I think I'm going to either start that transition next week or the week after, because again, I'm still I'm still in in fall and Halloween celebration. So we'll see. I can start the Christmas music now, though. I'm good with that. As am I. As am I. And I think something that we've also discussed. I know we've we've done it here in the pod before. Is when to take the decorations down. But Christmas decorations. Yes, Christmas decorations. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. when to mm-hmm. take them down. I don't think we've discussed when is the ideal time to put them up. So when your when your heart calls to you, when the Christmas spirit hits you, you know, I don't think there's mm-hmm. a right or wrong answer. Some people will, well, TV people, TV families <laughs> would decorate <laughs> Christmas Eve, which I never understood. That just, that made no sense to me. I have a story about that, but we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Okay. I want to. Okay. I feel like we should get there chronologically. Gotcha. In, All right. In the idealistic kind of um, trajectory or or timeline of decorating for Christmas. So, and and this is where I'm going to say where there is I want to say a possible wrong answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now. I also, I just want to put a disclaimer out that this does not apply to those people who, uh, because of what we went through last year, there were people Mm -hmm. who decided to, and this might, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll say 2020, they kind of left their Christmas decorations up maybe throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I've noticed this as I've traveled and traversed to different places and like, oh, you still got Christmas lights and it's, I don't know, um, April, July. Mm-hmm. Even August, I'll see like lights on. I'm like, okay, so maybe they're not necessarily technically quote unquote Christmas decorations, but I do see lights that seem like they have been up since December. So yeah, be that as it may, it's there. I see it. I'm not talking about you. Who I'm talking about 
where I mean this again, this timeline, it was a week before Halloween. And someone decided to put out a Santa Claus and, and had a <laughs> lights dangled up in their tree. And I mean, first it was the tree that had the lights in it. It was just like a, a regular like um, maple tree where it was just <laughs> lights on it. I'm like, okay, maybe that's for Halloween. And they're, you know, making some extra lighting for the trick or treaters that they're expecting. <laughs> Great. But then a couple of days later, and again, this is still in October, like, the last week of October and then mm-hmm. I see Santa and some reindeer and elves or whatever out in the lawn. I'm like, I'm not that I'm that kind of person, but I would egg your house if I saw that. <laughs> but you're not that kind of person. I'm not. You no, no. Okay, I, gotcha. I, I had the thought like, I like, I'm like, dude or ma'am or person. I feel offended. Like give Halloween its time. <laughs> Like, stop rushing well, it. Like, I, I'm okay with the stores doing it because that's what they do. We expect the that type of evil, that level of evil from them. Is that what you're saying? Well, I wouldn't call it evil. They're just trying to make money and, and capitalize on like, hey, you know, we know that the, the candy, we, we're about to put that in the clearance aisle. But right now, uh, this is way in the back of the store. We've got our Christmas tech or some of them have put it up front. Like, I mean, again, it's a week before Halloween and they already got like Christmas trees and, and Santa ho, 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 and then, and so forth. And I'm like, Hey, Hey, can we just get through Halloween first? And I mean, I'm surprised I'm even saying that because normally you usually say, can we get through Thanksgiving? Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, why are we so anxious to get to this Christmas holiday season? And I mean, granted, again, I love the Christmas season. I love the merry, jolly ho- holiday fun times and um, not so much the commercialism of it. Shout out to Charlie Brown. But, you know, I just can can we just embrace the now the the live in the moment and i'm not even like that crazy about halloween but i just want to let, let, let's enjoy the time in between but before we get to I, grant well, again again after the 31st if, though, yeah but come what on. if somebody doesn't celebrate halloween like you just said you're not crazy about it so what if people are just like man halloween is whatever you know insert your thoughts about halloween here <laughs> And they're just like, I just want to get to the holiday that I know I can celebrate or that I do celebrate and that I do care about. Just give me, give me, let's go ahead and skip to Christmas. I hear you. What if that's their thought process? I, I hear you. I'm, I'm on that same wave, but uh, practice some restraint. <laughs> just wait until like November. It's, I mean, that's, that's all I ask. That's all I ask. But here's another question, and this okay. is a this is a pretty, you know, I don't know. It's a it's a deep one. Did you die? <laughs> <laughs> like, are is their celebration early as it is? Is their celebration hurting you? Maybe your eyes, but like, and maybe your ego a little bit. But like, but is it actually hurting you or affecting you? Um. A little bit on my drive to wherever I'm going because I'm not expecting to see Santa and you know the Christmas lights. Do so you feel assaulted? Like it's a it's an assault, it's an affront to your to your senses and your sense of time and your it sense is. of respect to like seasons and how yes, yes reality I, moves forward. Gotcha. Be- because as we were discussing, I think even last episode, how just time is just so just jumbled up it's weird it is weird and now you're rushing it where yeah, making at times, it worse. right and i'm already kind of confused like is it august is it is it november what month are we in and now that you're showing me christmas lights and christmas displays and it's again wait did halloween happen no it hasn't happened yet why are you out this why are you doing this because you're you're frustrating mm-hmm. me so so yes i, I am it. assaulted i get it not insulted, but just assaulted with like. No, I get it. Yeah, or maybe a little. You sound a little insulted too, but that's a you know that's okay. It's a it's a time assault. Like I don't know that that feels like it should be a movie or something or time travel or just time. or just fighting time or something. I don't know, but but yeah, it, to continue this this uh, schedule or this calendar of when uh, decorations I, I should be decored decorated um i (laughs) i would say like 
typically traditionally in my family, we would wait until the day after Thanksgiving to start decorating because that gives you a whole mm-hmm. month to enjoy, you know, your, your holiday decorations. And mm-hmm. that depends on how far you go all out. Like my mother, she, she would decorate the whole house. Well, not the whole house, but at least where people would be gathered, they wouldn't go upstairs. So she wouldn't really have anything there. One year she did just because like she was really into the spirit. And so was I. So all of our bedroom doors look like Christmas presents, like giant Aww. Christmas presents. So that's cute. Yeah. So we, that was one year we went all out. But normally it's just mostly just like the living room, the dining room, because we do tend to entertain guests. So they, they tend to come and it looks very holly jolly. And we ended up subscribing to having those laser lights printed on the house. I say printed because nice. that's kind of what it looks like. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's sometimes it's too much to go out there and just hang lights everywhere to every nook and cranny of the outside house. So, you know, that's that's what we resided to do and I'm fine with it because it's a lot less work and I don't want to be out there on a ladder. So I get it. That's fine with me. It's more so the inside so you can enjoy the Christmas tree and all that good stuff. So Mm -hmm. that's when we decided. My wife, however, prefers Christmas to or to start celebrating Christmas after her birthday, which is December 2nd. So she does not subscribe to starting to celebrate after um, what is it? Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So because it's like Christmas is assaulting her birthday. Correct. Correct. She's like, no, no, no. Celebrate me then Christmas. So <laughs> I get um, that sentiment as a December 10th birthday. Correct. Uh, or birth person. I don't know. I get it because as a matter of fact, the December baby. We used to, well, December baby, but I'm like, like not quite late. December, but mid and enough for people to try to lump my birthday into Christmas, and it's not that's, fair. That's an assault on on your. That's person. an assault on my birth on my mm-hmm. like my my entire existence, really. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we used to. My mom. Now it started when I was younger. She didn't want to put the Christmas tree up um, because if we had a party at my house, she didn't want the little kids to get into the tree. You know, we and we lived in a pretty small house, so it's not like it was like out of the way. Mm-hmm. And so I think we kind of continued that tradition of putting it up pretty late, like close to right after my birthday or mm. close to closer, just closer to my birthday. And so when I grew up and realized how dumb that was, <laughs> I was like, I love Christmas and I want to see the stuff for longer than you know, a couple of weeks, especially because mm-hmm. I like to, I don't go all out, but I, I don't know. I like to see it. So that's when I started putting it up earlier and earlier <laughs> each mm-hmm. year so, so I can enjoy it longer. So yeah, Christmas does get decorated well before my birthday, but it's like a special treat to myself, not quite a birthday present, but mm-hmm. just a special treat to myself to love my surroundings even more. So you're okay with that then? Like if I'm okay with that. Yeah. Now I'm not okay with lumping my birthday in with Christmas or you know, anything like that. No. As but you the shouldn't decorations be decorations is, is okay. I'm good right. with that. Right. I mean, I w- I wouldn't be okay with that either. And I know it's extremely difficult for people like my cousin, who uh not even my cousin, my aunt and my cousin, both born on Christmas. So yep, that's just my, not fair. It, it's not, but my mother, and uh, she, she does her best to make sure that she gets both her and my cousin separate gifts. Like this is your mm-hmm. birthday present. This is your Christmas present. So, mm-hmm. yep. And Are I think right? only, only one time did my grandmother try to not even try. She did. She lumped my birthday in with Christmas, which <laughs> I mean, that I feel is ridiculous because it's beyond the month. Uh, yeah, away, this so. is well, well, yeah. I forget about you, you January babies. It's just not that's not fair either, because mm. it's like at least people sort of remember my birthday. I don't know if you ever get forgotten. I get forgotten sometimes, but uh, you know, I don't know. It's more of like a, um, I don't know. I, I'm thinking touristy. <laughs> that's not the right word, but it's more of like a funny anecdote about myself oh you have a december birthday oh that must suck christmas is right around the corner Mm. so they kind of like lump it in in that way i guess it's like your birthday's in january like everybody's 
you know, broke. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're like, you it's like, know. Oh, yeah. And I didn't have money saved up for that. Or yeah. I spent it all on Christmas already. Yeah. yeah. And they're hungover from the holidays. Not like right. literally, maybe literally, but, you know. Financially hungover? hungover? Well, just, just or, or emotionally, you know, that it mm. can take a lot out of you because you're busy and you're, you're traveling maybe and you're just going to all these Christmas parties and things like that, New Year's parties. So I feel like you're kind of like the, the redheaded stepchild of birthdays. Oh my. Is that accurate, Sterling? I, I, I wouldn't say it's that far because I'm like, I'm late January. I'm, I'm around the end. So like you're usually getting I, back into, you know, are you, are you speaking for yourself? Things. No, I was uh, speaking for you, but oh. you are late January. But I mean, people are, you know, people are people. This, this, is, this is true. Um, I would say that. I have a special relationship to your birthday in particular because you share a birthday with my mother. So yes, it's, it's a great day to be born. <laughs> <laughs> so your it's mom very, can attest to that. And, and absolutely. Cause I I'm so grateful for my mom because if, she, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. So yeah. So if it wasn't for her birthday, I wouldn't have a birthday. Right. So, exactly. Yes. But yeah, uh, because of that, that's the reason why I cannot forget your birthday at all. So it's, <laughs> kudos to you i suppose i don't know it's just great just great all around <laughs> it's just a, it's just good news all around yeah mm-hmm. good news for everybody however it's just difficult because of so many december birthdays i'm like oh yeah. man, i'm not gonna have anything left for christmas like, like yeah I, I need to please support the patreon so <laughs> um i can like give all of these lovely beautiful black women their gifts uh twice this month <laughs> Or because the month we of December. have separate days. Right. I don't know, man. It just sounds like poor planning on your part. You got my you part. Know, these days happen every year. They come, you know, like clockwork every year. Mm, like know. calendar work. Yes. Yes. Like calendar, yeah, that's that's better. Thank you. Whew. I mean, it's just <laughs> as I mean before. Again, it was just my mother I had to worry about her in december <laughs> then you came along then ashley uh-huh. came along so mm-hmm. i'm like oh man and keeping it's keeping you busy mm-hmm. <laughs> so, i mean again it's not just christmas gifts but also birthday gifts so that's six gifts plus everybody else that you know <laughs> if i feel like getting them something like here you go here's a mug or something i don't know <laughs> everybody's getting mugs this year and then you guys you get two mugs this year because one's for your birthday one's for christmas so well hey mm-hmm. i do like a good mug don't give me any mugs though that was i do like a mug but don't give me everybody knows i like mugs and so that's what i get mm-hmm. don't give me any mugs please i mean you could have a mug collection like just get a nice shelf and then you just start no, i have you know no, no i have a mug collection thank you do you have a shelf <laughs> to put them on i Yes, for display. but I'm running out of shelf space. You need a shelf like devoted for mugs. I'm going to get you a, a mug shelf. How about that? And then, no. then you can continue your mug collection. No, and just thank you. That's very thoughtful of you, but, but thank you. No, no. So then I'll get you a mug shelf for your birthday and then two mugs for Christmas. <laughs> oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't and, like then, this conversation and then that'll going. be just like each year you get another mug for your mug shelf. And mm. then once that shelf is full, I will get you another shelf for more mugs. Ooh. And... Mm. Mm-hmm. You're on to something. Not, See? not the right track, See? but you're on to something. I am already on the train. I'm the conductor of this train. I'm going to mm. tell all of your friends and your family. And they'll be like, oh, get gosh. her mugs. She wants mugs. It's funny we're talking about this because I actually just gave a whole box of mugs away. <laughs> like See? I gave them to the Goodwill. No, I gave them away because <laughs> there's too many mugs in my house. There's never there's no such thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I have so many mugs. It's ridiculous. And I still, I kept a lot of them because, I, I, again, I do like mugs. Mm-hmm. But, you know, many of them had to be rehomed. Mm, I see. To, to greener pastures, I guess. Better shelves. Well, your home will be like the give a penny, take a penny. So you'll get, you know, as you <laughs> gave away mugs, mugs will be replaced. Like, oh, newer, fresher mugs. Oh, gosh. And thank the you so first much. First mug will have my picture on it. So that way you. Like, I was oh, going to say, no, I, I was going to say I wanted a mug. If you're going to for real give me a mug, give me a, a mug with Ken's picture on it. 
Mm. So that's what I'll do each year. It'll be a mug of like different people, you know, so you can't get rid of them because like, ah, oh, I can't, well, I throw can't away. give them away. I can give can't them. give them away because like you're some rando like, who's this person? I don't want to marry right. this person. So, yeah. So, or, yeah, mm-hmm. that's 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 what's happening. It's mm. writing in the books. Aren't you mm. excited? Aren't you so excited? Ah, mm. I'm excited. I'm anyway. Funny. Back to my trajectory of, of Christmas decor and the story okay. I meant to tell you. Christmas Eve, as you were saying, like you've seen in movies, like who decorates on Christmas Eve? Well, my other grandmother would sometimes, well, I used to do this. She, mm-hmm. would, she would decorate on Christmas Eve. She'd put the tree up or somebody would put the tree up. I don't think she would do it, but someone would put the tree up. And each year it had gotten a little bit less. I feel like I've actually told the story before, but okay, yeah, each year there would be a little less decorating until I would say maybe the last few years, maybe even it might have stopped even that, but she would have this little like light display, like it was like a, a ring of lights and she would just hang out in the window and that was it <laughs> on Christmas Eve. That's so hard. Yes. You know, my, my mom is very, she's not my grandma, but she is very similar. She just each year is fewer and fewer decorations until in the recent years I don't know what's gotten into her but she is obsessed with like those old like farm trucks old red um like farm trucks with the Christmas tree in the back okay like have you ever seen that I think I have yeah Mm -hmm. It's, it's just an older red truck with with a Christmas tree in the back and that's her aesthetic and so she has built a whole Christmas themed, I, I don't know, just the whole thing ab- around that image. And like, I'm talking play. I mean, she hasn't quite gone overboard yet. It's a lot of like, it's on pillows and um, like, I think she has a, not, it's not a wreath, but like a placard or something with it on there. And she's got like uh, plates and she's got wrapping paper with it on it. So it's everywhere, but it's still not overkill. Because That's a lot, she, though. It is a lot, but she somehow she spaces it out, and it works. It, it really works for her, and so that's her new thing now. Now she still doesn't just go all out, but you're gonna see that red truck with the Christmas tree in the back of uh, many places in her mm. home <laughs> because that's her. That's her new thing, and it makes her happy and brings her joy, and that's what is most important. I agree. I agree. I mean, again, and it goes back to what you said from the very beginning, whatever makes you happy, what what brings Mm -hmm. you, what brings you the joy, then, Mm -hmm. you know, do to your heart's content. And I don't mind it so much if it's inside your house, but if you're that type of person that likes to put a Christmas tree up in the window so we can see it as we drive by, because yes, that also (laughs) happened that week of Halloween, because it was first that one house that I saw. And as I kept driving, there was a house across the street from that one that decided like, yeah, we're going to do it too. And then I drove a little <laughs> further and then there's a Christmas tree in somebody else's window. I'm like, dude, people, what is going on? Stop it. They're ready. They're ready. I need you to calm See, all they don't the way have down. To get, they don't have, they, they stay ready. So they don't have to get ready. But sometimes the fun is in the getting ready. And then there's a time to get ready. And there's, there's a time to be ready. I gotcha. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If okay. anything, just get ready to get ready. So that means just get the boxes out and <laughs> leave them in, like in the room you're gonna set your stuff up in. Just get those that. out and they just, just wait. They did that in October. I, well, I they mean, didn't do the waiting part. They did the getting ready to get ready part. They just didn't do the waiting part. So you're seeing the product of I can't wait. Black Christmas. My I'm coworker take- was mm-hmm. even telling me about a. Um, I, I don't know what it would be. I guess it's a Christmas. It's a Christmas store. So, and it's already up and running, of course. Um, but she went this past weekend and hasn't stopped talking about it because she loves it so much. She loves Christmas, of course, but she said they were spending hundreds. The, the her and the group that she went with were spending hundreds of dollars just in their shopping for Christmas. I'm like, man, if you like Christmas this much to shop you know go to a a christmas store that means you probably already have christmas stuff and you probably already have it out and so now you're getting more christmas stuff 
Right. Interesting. Interesting. Like what happened to the stuff we had last year or. Hey, well, but see, these are the types, I think her, you know, her group like has a Christmas tree in each room. And I don't know if they're the the small Christmas trees. I wonder if, I think they're at least, you know, four foot Mm -hmm. trees in each room fully decorated. So when you're that into Christmas, and you go big with it, then you go big with it and you have to replace stuff and you want to maybe cycle some things out. So like every, I have I can some see decorations that. that I don't use and I don't go all out, but it's just a matter of um, just space, a spacing mm-hmm. issue. So I don't know, could be, that could be their case too, or maybe they're buying for other people or something. I don't know. Everybody Perhaps. has their reasons. They do. The thing I, I can understand is if you need to replace your lights, because that, mm. I mean, that yeah, I can get. I understand thing. that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. going out to go all out to get more lights, because that was always my mother's thing. Like her tree was just not bright enough. She needed more lights or just mm. more colors. So mm-hmm. I, I would get that. I understand. But to go out and get all who all, mm-hmm. all new decorations, unless, unless, and I feel like I'm, I'm being a little bit of, a, of an enabler, but Perhaps you just want a different Christmas theme. Like, okay, last yeah. year was red and gold. This year is going to be blue and silver. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I can understand. So, do, I mean, again, do what you want to do to your heart's content. If it's on sale, like now, and like, yeah. oh, we got to get it before they run out. And because I know I'm good for, for trying to see what's left over. Sometimes before mm-hmm. Christmas is over ooh. or even after Christmas, because ooh, you just get the slim pickings. And that's when people are like scavenging. They actually take like the light bulbs out of the sockets of like the <laughs> string of lights and you really mm-hmm. don't have a working anything. So, yeah, I mean, people are, are just grimy around this time. Yeah, of the year. it can be. Or at least at I the end of the say, year. Yeah, I will say I happened to, I don't know if it was a New Year's sale. It was definitely after Christmas, though, but I was able to get. For my first Christmas in my in my house, well, well, yeah, for my first Christmas in my house, I had all the stuff because I had gotten it like a year prior. Mm. So I was able to get some pretty good stuff, uh, like on a at a really good rate because I this wasn't the plan. It just kind of happened, and I, I don't know. Somehow I lucked out. I got a good tree that's still working, and I got a <laughs> bunch of ornaments and. You know, and it wasn't slim pickings for me, so I don't, I don't know. I left out, I guess, but you did. You it definitely, did. it yeah, it definitely was after Christmas, and I saved probably a lot of money. So I don't know. Hmm. Unfortunate well, because I don't, I would have been like scrambling that next like real Christmas, <laughs> trying to figure things out. <laughs> It's like, I need these things, but you already have them. So you're good. Right. Exactly. As do I. All my stuff's in storage currently. So I'll probably go get that probably in the next couple of weeks, if not sooner. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's the only thing that I can get in storage. Everything yeah. else is like like Ashley's bedroom set. It's all in the storage and there's really no space in there anymore. So, but I put it up, up close. So I'm like, well, we're going to need this soon. So I'll mm-hmm. just go get that. That's smart. It is. And the other thing, Christmas related and I meant, and I'm, I was saving this to bring up with you because of something we've been discussing the last week or so is making at least your Christmas decor smart. Mm-hmm. Will you be, will you be utilizing any smart plugs to help you turn on or off your decorations when they're not in use? Maybe I, or had you considered it? I actually hadn't considered it until just now. All of the, so dear listeners, we, Sterling and I have been talking about smart plugs and, and I want some LED lights just for year round for my office space. And so we were talking about just different options in that way. I hadn't actually thought of using it for my Christmas decor, but that's a really good idea. The only issue is the smart plugs that I have and probably have had for a couple of years now, I can't get them to work. I can't get them to connect with my wi-fi i'm sure they work i'm sure they work i just i just can't get them to do the smart part of the working uh, which is <laughs> which is something know, we're going to work on later this week so we'll yeah because i'm i'm ready like i mean simple things like if i'm laying in, in 
bed watching TV, I need the TV to turn off later because I'm going to fall asleep. That's like mm-hmm. the thing. I don't, I'm going to fall asleep on the TV if I'm watching in, in the bed, but I need it to, I don't have a sleep timer on my TV. So, and if I do, I still haven't found it, but <laughs> I figure a smart plug would be perfect for that. It'll automatically turn the TV off, you know, stuff like that. Now, now I'm thinking of things I could do Christmas decoration wise, maybe do something like a timer for the tree to turn it off or Mm -hmm. other lights that I have Christmas lights that I uh, typically will put up in the house. So uh, I don't know. I I assume you will be. Yes. In fact, I, I, it's already like programmed within at least the phone. Um, I don't know if I still have the same plug, even still, I can just get a new one, but the key is, and this goes for everyone out there who's curious about it. Most smart devices or rather smart plugs or smart light bulbs, they Mm -hmm. work on a 2.4 gigahertz, like for your Wi-Fi. So Mm -hmm. if, and I feel like that's the problem that you, Courtney, might be running into where you are connected to five gigahertz Wi-Fi and either your Wi-Fi is maybe or maybe not dual band. That's something we will figure out later off there we'll follow up next episode for this mm-hmm. this journey of smart devices <laughs> but i'm just putting that out there for anybody else who's curious and i haven't thought about it but yeah get some smart plugs and most smart devices work on the 2.4 gigahertz band of wi-fi signal i don't know why mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to me but that's just how they work so that would mean that the user will have to do some work and some research to figure out how they're connecting to the internet the their Wi-Fi and you usually have to check by their phone because the phone has to be in the same network as the devices. And that's how you're going to get everything ah. to talk to each other and work. Mm-hmm. After mm-hmm. that, once you get it connected, then that's when the magic happens and you can schedule things to turn on and off. Like all the lights in the living room will turn on like maybe 45 minutes before um, sundown because it mm-hmm. already it's already getting dark, but just, yeah, you know, you need that extra light to come in. Um, so yeah. all the living room lights turn on at, four, uh, I'll say like four, not even four 30. Cause that's when the sun sets now, but like they'll turn on like maybe three 30 or four o'clock and mm-hmm. then they will turn off no matter what at 11. So that means everybody should be in bed by then. Normally we're already right. in bed, but sometimes yeah. we forget to turn the lights off. So yeah, we'll do that. fall asleep or something. Exactly. Exactly. And then even in our bedroom, all the lights will turn off at midnight. Because we should be asleep by then, or you know, it's it's also a sign like, hey, if you're still awake, go to sleep, go to bed. So yeah, 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 yeah. And then because I did give in, I do have an Alexa device. So you know, it's only in my room, so I'm able to control everything within the apartment by by mm-hmm. talking to it. I can't say mm-hmm. the keyword because then it'll activate it, and it's yeah. not Alexa, <laughs> so I can continue to say that. But. I'll talk to her and tell her or it like, Hey, turn the TV off or pause the TV or turn off living room or, you know, whatever I needed to do. So all of these things make it just a little bit easier and a little bit smarter. And even though I know we've, we've watched Mr. Robot and all the things that we can see that can be hacked and turned against us, but it's unlikely because who am I? I'm just, just a lowly, you know, just nobody wants to come hack me. I mean, they, I mean, they've done before hack me and, took over my Netflix and started watching things that I didn't intend on watching and messing up my Ooh. algorithms. Let I'm okay. Me. I'm okay. I know it wasn't you. I know. I mean, it <laughs> happened with my Spotify too. I was upset about that one. That's for sure. Oh, I bet you were. Yeah. They were listening to some nonsense and that really messed with like um, what they recommend to me, like uh, new releases and things you might be into. And then they started recommending things that I definitely was not into. Yeah, yeah, it took ugh. a while to reprogram that one. Yeah, that's that's so inconvenient. It, oh, I'm still bothered, and that was years ago. Like I've, I've <laughs> since reprogrammed it then since, but I'm like still upset. But, but yes, we will follow along with your your smart device saga and and follow up next episode, which I'm excited about next episode. Do you know why? <gasps> Why? We have a special guest or guests, plural, for Woo! our our annual Friendsgiving 
and Doob episode, which yes. won't be live this time, but I mean, we probably could because they're used to being live. I don't want to spoil mm. who the surprise is, but mm-hmm. but yes, we've we've got guests coming and I'm excited. Um, big fans, big fans of them. And I mm-hmm. hope they'll, they'll be fans of us and friends and, and you know, come back again sometime yeah. after this first time that hasn't happened yet, <laughs> but still. <laughs> You speak excited. it all into existence. I, I am. I am. I am. So I'm looking forward to that. And so, I mean, tell your, you should already be telling your friends and I'm, I'm really grateful to those who have told their friends about this podcast because it, it, it is growing and I'm thankful for that. The love blurs podcast is growing and I'm thankful for that, especially because eventually we will have like, I guess 50 unique listeners. And that will mean that we can actually do, uh, advertisements on that so or like sponsored yeah. ads and 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 that's making me consider like hmm maybe indube might move over to being hosted over on at uh, anchor maybe hmm. yeah still twirling my mustache evilly i don't know why why evilly <laughs> stroking my beard there there we go stroking that's less... your beard non maliciously right right that's it's less less malicious less and malicious the... yeah right in the meantime, we do have some, or rather some, a couple um, films that came out that I'd like to discuss with you, which I'm, I, I don't want to assume you've watched them, but I don't think Probably you have. Probably haven't. Yes. We had a busy weekend anyway, so I knew you wouldn't have seen Eternals. Which... No, but I'm going to see it <laughs> soon. Okay. <sighs> I, I feel the excitement and the squeal and the, and the not the anxiety, but just the, you know, the anticipation. So the anticipation. Yeah. I'm so mm-hmm. excited to see it. And without spoiling anything, I did do a review with Ashley. It's in fact, I posted it just before we started recording. So it's out there. It, there are spoilers. However, my spoiler free review is as follows and go with me for a journey briefly, Courtney, if you will. Okay. I'm with you. Uh, I enjoy eating grapes. I know this took a really weird left turn, but (laughs) follow me here. And we all know what grapes taste like. They're delicious. They don't taste like the purple drink that you're, you know, accustomed to, but they're grapes. Mm -hmm. Grapes are, they're yummy. Purple, red, green, all of them. Uh, A few, maybe a month or so ago, that was probably longer than that. uh, Ashley gave me some cotton candy grapes. Those were absolutely delicious. Like you, you take a bite and all of a sudden mm, it just hits you. Cause like, it, they're like so <laughs> much sweeter and it, they're just delicious. And you just want to just keep eating them and they're great. They're delicious. I love them. And then what was it? Was it last night? I think it was last night. She came home with strawberry flavored grapes, which I didn't even know was a thing. Oh, wow. I hadn't either. Heard, I haven't heard that either. Yeah, they're, they're like strawberry infused. I don't even know, but they they hmm. do have that hint of strawberry. I don't I can't remember if it's the artificial taste of strawberry or the actual taste of strawberry fruit infused in the in the grape. And hmm. I had that and I'm like, "Huh. It wasn't a hmm, like the excitement of the hmm. burst of flavor of excitement, but it was more mm-hmm. like a subtle like, "Huh, okay. That was nice." I mean, it's better than a regular tasting grape, but it's not necessarily worse. Like I didn't hate it. It was just good. Mm, I will keep eating okay. them. I'll, I'll enjoy them further. You know, I'll have a few more. It's not what I, it's not the, the cotton candy grapes, but they're also not regular grapes. I was going to say, so you prefer the, the cotton candy grapes to the strawberry grapes, I assume. Yes. That's and then if I like. if I can't get the strawberry grapes, I'll be perfectly fine with regular grapes. But the cotton candy okay. grapes, those are hard to get for some reason. Like they're not always in season and they're not always in the same yeah. store. So we have our and sometimes we even do get them, but then they don't taste as good as like that first mm. batch we had. So I say oh, all that I... to huh? What? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, well, I say all that to say that the way I feel about strawberry grapes is the way I feel about the movie Eternals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. And I said this to so, Ashley and, and she just like burst into laughter because she feels the same way. Hmm. So you appreciated, but you could do without it. Well, I appreciated it and I liked it and I will keep eating them. Like I don't hate them. I have nothing against them. It's just not as great as the cotton candy grapes. 
Gotcha. So if I were to compare Aww. this to, you know, some other Marvel movie, like I don't want to say most of them. Oh, yeah. Most of them, I guess. Like, but it was good. Eternals was good. I did not dislike it. It was very different. And I think I, I was going mm-hmm. into it knowing that because of the director. Like, I've never seen any of her work, but I'm very familiar, like, with other films she's done okay. and how she makes movies. And it's definitely her movie. And, okay. it's, and it's different in a way that is um, not expected. So if you're like, you're like this big fanboy type and you're ready for the booms mm-hmm. and the explosions. I mean, you're mm-hmm. still going to get gonna that. Get you're going to get it. It's just there's going to be a whole lot of like um, character building and just human moments in between that. Mm-hmm. A whole Mm -hmm. lot of natural lighting. Yeah. So I even tweeted about it too. Like it's a very uh, global feeling movie. It's very epic in that way, but it's also very grounded. Hmm. So global in the sense of the cast, because like it's a very diverse cast, but Mm -hmm. it also takes place pretty much all over the the globe and all throughout different times. And I found that very interesting. interesting. Like, yeah. So there, there's a lot to chew on with this movie. And I've, I've actually still been thinking about it since I saw it. So it's, that's what I mean. It's really different and it's, and it's good. Like, you know, I, I'd go back to, to see it again. And, but I mean, okay. So I wouldn't go back to the theater to see it again, but I definitely would watch it again just to okay. get more nuggets and more, you know, bits out of it because I mean, it's, it's good. It's wholesome. It's a grape. <laughs> just not a cotton candy grape it's not a cotton candy grape but it is a strawberry grape so it's different than gotcha. your regular grapes yeah well, it's got that a few steps above a regular grape but you can't okay. always find these grapes uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay i like that that's a mm-hmm. very interesting analogy that i have definitely never heard before <laughs> yeah i mean and again it, it didn't occur to me until after i had like the strawberry grapes and then i and that's when i turned to ashley and like you know what this is like the movie eternals and after i was telling her how i felt about the grapes themselves and then she was like yep yeah, you're absolutely right as she sat there <laughs> laughing at me so because she agrees i mean she also i'm, I'm going to tell on her a little bit she did fall asleep a little bit through it but that's kind of i mean it was a really long day and she was also mm-hmm. hungry so and there are moments that I would say I'm putting in quotes because this is what my dad would say. There are some dry patches in the movie. And, gotcha. and that's normally when there's a whole lot of talking and dialogue and, and, you know, not, not enough fighting and boom, boom. I almost said boom, boom, pat, but that's music. So um, it just, you know, action. Mm, yeah, there is, there is action. It's just not throughout the whole thing. So I'm like, there's got to be some storytelling, some some character building, because these are brand new characters. My mother asked me like, well, who's in this movie? Who do I know? I'm like, you don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Not and even I, Angelina Jolie. And she no, oh, no, no. She meant characters. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. She was like, gotcha. his, yeah. like his Iron Man or Captain America. Like, nope, oh, nobody, no. nobody, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, and the other thing I will say, last bit is the Celestials. You get to meet one of them. Nice. absolutely terrifying i can't wait yeah <laughs> i cannot wait to see i, I just can't wait to see them or, I, him, I, or them the one i don't know i believe it's a him but i mean from here like now that we've met um oh man i think his name is Askram. i uh, and there and again once you see it then you can go listen to our our review because i i go through a whole list of wrong names that it's not the celestial's name and um, just, but just his sheer size and, and just the weight of who he is as a character. And I just can't wait to see what, what comes after this because mm-hmm. of what we're introduced in this cosmic realm. So yeah, I can't wait to see what, what's next there. There's nothing official about a sequel. There definitely are and credit sequences and, and, Trust me, you'll you'll want to see the very last scene, and there's a voice. That's all I'm going to say because we can talk about that later. So uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so so excited. That, that is one movie. The other movie I saw that I was like super excited about, um, the harder they fall, which nice. I, we may have discussed prior. But mm-hmm. I knew we were going to discuss it this episode. I even prepped you. I'm like, hey, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> Got to get a chance to watch it. And I'm like, I'm going to watch it. But you're not in, in the time. So 
All I'm going to say is this, this man here, this, who put this all together. Why don't, oh man, his, his name just escaped me. So I have to look it up very quickly. Um, oh my God, what, what is going on my phone? It was being really weird. Okay. Uh, I, I, okay. Let me first get him. Cause I want to say his name first before I start putting in quotes, comparing him to somebody else. Cause I'm like, I can't think of any other James Samuel. Okay, that's that is the director's name, but he's just not the director. He's the writer, the producer, okay. the the composer, um, the musical supervisor. Uh, the only thing he had, he didn't do was like star in it, but <laughs> he, him and and Jay Z of all people, well, not of all people, mm-hmm. they they were working okay. together for like ten years, but yeah. Well, I thought I saw. Well, I saw Sean Carter, Carter and I was like, wait isn't jay-z sean carter mm-hmm. so thank you for confirming that thank you yep and and he was also also pretty hands-on too i think he was actually there on set uh wow. he is in two of the songs on the soundtrack which is actually pretty short it's only like 40 minutes and mm. i was i've been listening to the soundtrack repeatedly and that is something you uh, you hear a lot about with the reviews is how well this how good the soundtrack is for this movie mm-hmm. and i agree and there's just so much about the movie that I love. Um, I will say that for those people who don't like violence, it does get pretty bloody. Mm. Oh, well, not pretty bloody, but I mean, with the gunshots and gunfire, like it was like, oh, wow. Sure. I mean, it's a really Western. It is a Western. Yeah. And it's a rated R 2021. True. Western. True. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, for me, if, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't watched it again since, but I definitely will. And I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of westerns, but this definitely made my list of very short films of or western films that I really like. So, yeah, it it checked off multiple boxes, and it it is an ensemble cast of amazing black yeah. actors, and they all have their moment to shine. And I'm like, wow, this is great. Just mm. now, the criticism that did come up, and I loved what James had said about it that um, there are many characters. Okay. Sorry. Let me back up. The characters in the movie are based on real life people. So really the the story is fictional, but the characters Mm. are real. Like they're real people that existed. Interesting. I didn't know that. So once people, right, right. Uh, Stagecoach Mary is one of them. Mm. And people were actually posting the picture of what stagecoach, stage coach mary actually looked like and zazzy beats plays this character mm. and they look nothing alike mm. but that wasn't the point that james was trying to make the point was again this is a real life person and then he was actually excited that people were like no this is what this is really stage coach mary he was excited people were actually saying her name and like and showing like hey this is a real history this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to bring yeah. light to these real life people and that's amazing so uh, just kudos all around and i'm i just can't say enough about this movie and how much I, I enjoyed watching it and just getting deeper into even just hearing this guy talk about the movie and, and all the aspects and, and things that went along with it and he said he littered so many easter eggs over the movie and i have no idea how many there are and there's only one of them that's been widely proclaimed the most and that is there's a train robbery or not even just a robbery but they they stop a train or hijack mm-hmm. a train and um the name of the train is named after chadwick boseman oh so i think you just did a spoiler for me it's not a real spoiler but like my mom saw it and she's like there's a thing i need you to i need you to notice and she's like i can't say it or you'll like you'll you'll be looking for it i just want to see if you'll notice it or not and she's very much a chadwick boseman fan and you know very sad when he passed obviously um, and so I wonder if that's the thing. <laughs> uh, More than likely, she, yeah. She, 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 she's not good at like giving hints without telling it. Um, and that's, I guess, most of us. You know, it's hard to <laughs> point to something without pointing to the thing and making it obvious. Mm-hmm. So I wonder I'm working if, on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> well, I wonder if that was it. I'm going to have to put a pin in this conversation and remember it for when I watch the movie and. I mean, that's it. <laughs> well, I decided to spoil it because it it has been 
posted so many times, like it's on the Netflix account, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. they, and not the Netflix on, on Twitter. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they show, they show the scene itself. Like you can't miss it. Gotcha. gotcha. And, and it's in like the first five minutes too. So I feel like it's fair game perhaps. Yeah. And I admit, I actually missed it. <laughs> like I knew, Did you I, really? I knew there was like a, a tribute or, or homage to him or something like that. Mm. And it was right there and I missed it. So yeah. Well, you know, right. We all have our strengths. and weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there are definitely several others as well as just jokes. And it's just, it's a really well done movie and I can't wait to see what he does next. And um, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I love it. And I mean, if I have time tonight, maybe I'll go back and watch it again, perhaps. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But that for me, I would say as a recommendation to watch it. Um, that is, if you can handle language and can handle violence, if those things aren't going to bother you, then go forth and enjoy. So, I mean, especially if you do like Westerns, like my dad and my father-in-law. So they both like Westerns mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. one of them has seen it. And he didn't necessarily say that he loved it. He said he really liked the ending, which I admit is a good ending. It is mm-hmm. a good ending. Wrapped it up nicely. And mm-hmm. also the mm-hmm. soundtrack is also very good. I've listened to it on repeat a few times, especially today, just because like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm tired of my old playlist. Let me go to this now. So, yeah. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, the harder they fall. And I'm looking forward to a sequel or whatever else uh james has up his sleeve sleeves nice. and, and jay-z because i think they said they're working together on whatever the next thing is so i'm excited that's pretty cool mm-hmm. that counts as the black history fact too by the way because of the characters and i had like a whole mm-hmm. thing i was going to run through and, and read each of the characters like who they actually were what they did but y'all do that you do the homework i, I told you the part that you needed to know that all the characters they were real so Everything else in the movie, as far as I know, is pretty fictional. So, but mm-hmm. still, it's a good story. It really is. Yeah. So I do want to give a couple shout outs because um, I was going to do space and not talk about black holes, but talk about Jupiter. But I will skip that for now. Unless you're really curious what's happening with Jupiter. Um, I am curious as always. Um, but let's save it for a rainy day. Okay, because as far as I know, uh, this information that I found isn't changing. So, because mm. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's Jupiter. So, <laughs> to be right. here for a little like, while, right? Yeah, he's gonna be up there for a while. So, in that case, I will do some some quick shout outs before our actual like oh any, before I, I give the floor to anyone who wants to give out shout outs. But shout out <laughs> to our good friend and fan of the show, Abby, who is uh, leaving no longer going to be my co-worker anymore Aww. she's got a new job or actually she's got a job but she's got i guess a promotion so she's nice. going to be taking on that job and i just want to continue to say thank you so much for being such a friend and looking out for me and all that good stuff and randomly seeing each other whenever we do because we don't get to see each other as often as we used to but she's always been a, a good fan a good friend and a supporter and uh, yeah, just wanted to send you an official like send off and all that good stuff. And congrats. And congratulations. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, all right. I guess we'll just move on into recommendations. Do you, do you have any recommendations? Yes. So I, so this is kind of a, like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to say a half recommendation, but it's not like a 100% recommendation. It's more like a, <laughs> I, I, once I get to the finish line, I can probably most likely 100% recommend it. I say this because I started a movie, started a little movie called Dune. Oh, um, that's what I forgot. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll come, I'll come back. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. So I started it, but it's a long movie. It's like two and a half hours. And so of course, you know, when when we when me and Daniel get to watching it, it's later in the night, like closer to the time I'd be going to bed. And so I've tried twice now to watch it. I the first time I knew I wasn't it, it wasn't going to fly. And so like 15 minutes in, maybe in five minutes in, I was out like just to, to dreamland. And so the second time 
I got about an hour into it, hour and 15 actually. And it was really good. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite make it to the finish line, but I will say that I've tried multiple times mm. and I'm only falling asleep because I'm starting it kind of late and it's a dense, like it's very much, uh, sci-fi heavy. I mean, it mm. is a sci-fi, a hard sci-fi, right? It's, it's hard sci-fi. And so I do like hard sci-fi, but it is because it's such a dense, uh, movie and like the world is so dense um, it's it's I forget where I was going with that I'm not falling asleep because of that but I'm having to kind of start over and rewatch because I'm if I'm start to fall asleep I'm missing some really important information about right right the story now I will say that it's it's an interesting the, the style of storytelling is very interesting because I feel like, like now I have not watched any of the previous Dooms. Like there was like a, a mini series and there was another. One by uh, David movie. Lynch in 1982 or 1984. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I've not seen any of those previous iterations of Dune. I, I knew very little about Dune um, and the world of Dune prior to watching the movie. And really I'm learning more about the universe of Dune just by talking to Daniel, who knows a lot about it. Mm-hmm. All I know was desert and big, big, big old worms. Right. <laughs> As did I. So, but there's a whole, whole, whole lot more of that. Absolutely. Or a whole lot more to it than that. And so, um, anyways, I'm, I'm still about halfway through the movie um, <laughs> and still learning about it, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving the visuals are, are really, really good. Um, it, I do have some some nits, I get some nitpicks because it's a very different style of storytelling and it's a little bit slow. It's slower than I thought it would be. There's a lot of quiet moments. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes people are whispering for long <laughs> amounts of time or maybe not talking at all. And it's just it's just the pacing of it is very different, especially since the resident Dune uh knowledge head is giving me all this extra information that the movie hasn't yet. Mm -hmm. It seems odd that I, that we wouldn't have that information at this point in the movie. So, um, so yeah, but that sounds kind of bad, but I I really do. I really am enjoying the experience. It's so different, such a different like world and so interesting. And like the 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 sand and the worms actually like there's a point to it <laughs> right and it's it's just very interesting very interesting so i would actually recommend the movie even if it doesn't come across i don't know if it's coming across as a actual recommendation or not it's 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 a world that's new to you that you are diving into and you are interested in it um because there's there's so much lore around it. Yes. And for yes. me, I, cause I was like, what, why are people so hyped about this movie? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. And I kind of got like a precursor of some people and not, not too many people were like giving me things to like homework. <laughs> cause I didn't really mm-hmm. want it. I just mm-hmm. was like, well, let me just watch it for myself to just figure it out to see if I get hype about it. Mm-hmm. And, and this is not a, Unrecommendation. I did not get hype, but I do understand the hype around it now mm-hmm. because it is a book that, or a novel rather, it's a mm-hmm. series. Actually, it's a series of novels, but still, it's from the main novel uh, yeah. that came out mm, seventy years now ago. I don't know, a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. But <laughs> and and to the point where Ashley is now interested in, in reading this book herself. Me too, actually. So. Because yes, there is a lot, and it's one of those films that I, I'm pretty sure was like this is unfilmable, and here we do, mm-hmm. here we have like at least three, at least three versions of it on film or mm-hmm. screen, mm-hmm. and we did watch it, and we were actually surprised that we watched the whole thing like in one sitting, as late as it was when we decided to start watching it, mm-hmm. which is why I was like, oh yeah, we didn't talk about that here, did we? And or at all, I don't think I talked to you at all about it. Um, yeah. But yes, it is a dense movie. There is a, I want to say a lot going on. They will throw a mm-hmm. lot at you and expect mm-hmm. you to not expect you to know, but you have to remember like, well, they, 
I mean, they, they don't, they don't baby you. Like they don't, right. Uh, like, they don't spoon feed you like this they don't information. Spoon feed. Yeah. So you do have, there is a little bit of a learning curve. You have to kind of catch up, play a little bit of catch up, but it's not, it's not inaccessible if that makes sense. Like it, it even, even a casual sci-fi viewer would be able and interested in um, the story that they're, that they're telling. Right. And, and it is an interesting one. It just, it is, it does move at its like own pace. And I've, I've actually been watching, we, you and I have a familiar movie that we like from the same director uh, by way of Arrival. Mm. He, he did that movie. So and is he that also, the same, is that the director who's doing Dune? Yes. Who did Dune? Yep. I yep. did not know. So that makes a lot more sense because mm-hmm. it's very this okay. Uh, that makes more sense now. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that, but yeah, I can see his fingerprints all over this one. The other film he did, which I don't know if you watched or not, I know I went to the theater to see it. Kind of just like meh, I'll go check it out. Is um Blade Runner twenty forty nine or whatever whatever sequel it was, and my feelings for that movie was meh. So, <laughs> but it was it's very similar in that whole like. I'm giving you mood. I'm giving you atmosphere. I'm taking you to mm. another world mm-hmm. and I'm just going to overwhelm your senses with this world. And mm-hmm. he, he's good at that. So it's more of like a mood piece than a movie, <laughs> if you will. Mm. I like and that. It's so thank you. Thank you. It, that it literally just hit me just now. So mm-hmm. because that's what it is. It's just very like moody in that way. Like not yes. in a bad mood, but it's like, I'm taking you it's to this very world. Yeah. Ethereal and very other a very otherworldly. Very much. Very just just different. The visuals are insane. Like insane. they are. They are. And and even like to scale, like some of like yeah, the like the scale, oh, that's, that's it. huge. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The characters, they're very, I want to say vivid in that way too. Like they're just mm-hmm. very different, but at the same time, like, huh. This reminds mm-hmm. me of something. Mm-hmm. And that thing that it kept reminding me of was Star Wars. So mm, only yeah. to later learn that uh, Dune wasn't um, a copy of Star Wars, but Star Wars was a copy of Dune in a sense, Ooh, in a sense. Okay. Apparently I can see some similarities. I'm, right. you know, I'm not a big Star Wars. Like I, I know. So I can't, <laughs> I can't name all the similarities and I still haven't finished watching Dune. So there's that. Right. But I'm married I, to one. So I that's that's where it first yeah. started popping up the whole Star yeah. Wars references. But carry on, carry on. Well, just I mean, I, I know enough about Star Wars. I've seen some of the movie like it's not I'm not just completely blind to Star Wars lore. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I see a lot of the similarities and it's it's pretty it's pretty neat, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's well, it was no no it's for the similarities are pretty neat because they're similar but they're still very different. Right, right. I don't want to say it's they're ripping off each other or anything like that, but I mean they're still very different. There, there are people, even Star Wars fans, that will gladly say like, "Oh no, uh, um, George definitely ripped off of Dune," and maybe <laughs> he did. I just know that he was following the hero's journey like to a T, mm. because everybody uses that model yeah. or uses yeah. Star Wars as the example of the the hero's of journey. The hero's because, journey, yeah, because he did. So mm-hmm. I, I'm fully on board saying he ripped that off, but I mean. So does most everybody. So nothing's new under the sun. So we kind of all kind of. Mm-hmm, I mean, hey, each other. Dune is actually the hero's journey, too. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's I mean, but yeah, uh, George, uh, why? Why can't I'm blanking on his last name? Lucas. Yes. George Lucas. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he definitely is a Star Wars, Star Wars, um, a sci-fi fan. So I'm pretty sure he read Dune and was inspired by a lot of what he read to create his own story. So, yeah, I, that- I mean, I was inspired even just just within the first few minutes of, of the movie. I was like, wow, there's a lot I can I'm going to have to steal from this because it's just <laughs> done so well. And, it's mm-hmm. you know, it's like the political part of it is even so very interesting and i'm and there's there's ways that yes you will see this in future work for me okay (laughs) that's for sure well i mean hey that's it's also that's in star wars and it's i'm also a child of mystery science theater 3000 and that Mm. 
I grew up watching it like every Saturday night when it came on. So when I'm watching this with Ashley, we can't help. It also kind of helped us stay awake, but we would just kind of crack jokes in between just to kind of help us get through it. Because again, we started watching it really late until we actually really got interested. And then we stopped making jokes because we're like, wait, what just happened? And we actually did pause it at one point so we can discuss what had happened in a, in a previous scene. Cause we were like, wait, wait, this person doesn't like that person. So they're like ganging up to get that other. So yeah, we had to do that just to make sure that we understood what was happening since then. I have like gone on a YouTube journey to watch other videos and one video that actually explained it in five minutes, the story, like mm-hmm. the whole story of Dune, including the following novels after it. So mm-hmm. that was helpful. Uh, and then I think it was maybe earlier this week, Ashley and I decided to watch the John the John, the David Lynch version of Dune. Mm-hmm. Who, David Lynch is if he could, he would disown this film because he didn't like it. He didn't like what he Aww. produced. But we watched it, and my God, is it weird? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that we watched the version that we did, but he, uh, David Lynch, actually put the entire story, like, I guess, well, I, not I guess, but this is like two parts. What mm-hmm. the new version is, was part one, part two will come later. What David Lynch did was he did the whole novel. So we oh, see wow. what happens after part one ends, and mm-hmm. it's like, Basically, you just kind of keep saying out loud, like, okay, that happened. Like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what happened or why it happened or what's happening now. But that's probably where the novel would come in. And then you'd be able to understand a little bit more. I even read that when it was screened in theaters, people were given glossaries so they can kind of follow along to a lot of the the lingo. Yes. A lot was happening. A lot of information was thrown at you. And I'm glad that we watched the version we did because Mm -hmm. we would be completely lost. Mm -hmm. And well, I have a, I have a resident Dune head. So that helps, but because a lot, (laughs) like I said, a lot of what he's telling me is just not, I don't know that it won't be revealed in the movie, but it's definitely not there now. And it, it's already kind of coloring my like opinion of the movie and the story, I guess, because I'm Mm -hmm. like, man, that seems like a big, a big plot point. Why is it not? Why are we not? why don't why haven't i even heard of it in the movie so i don't know we'll see i'm definitely interested in watching like all the other iterations of this movie though i definitely want to read the book because it's it's just such an interesting story such an interesting world please watch david lynch's version because there is a i mean there are many things i would love to discuss to get your views on but one thing in particular you know how um how they have like their their battle suits not not the mm-hmm. not the moisture suits, but like the suits where oh. it keeps them safe from like any attacks, any fast. Oh, attacks. like the shield thing. The shield thing, yeah. Yeah. In David Lynch's version, I need you to watch their suits because okay. oh my god, I was not ready. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, that's... now I'm very, now yeah. I'm very, uh, very interested. Because <laughs> I only thought about it like just before like that scene. Like you'll you'll know when the scene is about to happen because mm. yeah. Because it happens in, okay. in this version. So, and then I'm like, okay, what is there, that going to look like? And I'm like, oh, ho, ho, ho. so yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that and wait for you to see it. Okay. And then, and then um, I'm, I'm just going to wait for like a random text, like, oh my God. And, and then there it is. I'm watching yeah. Dune, uh, the old one. So, <laughs> yeah. So, my recommendation is um, first, I'll ask you, are you familiar with Pikmin? No. P I K M I N. Well, I don't think so. Pikmin Bloom. Oh, well, first of all, Pikmin is this game on, from Nintendo where there's these little creature sprite thingies that just kind of follow you around and like fight bugs and mushrooms and stuff. I haven't played it in years, but they just released a mobile version for your phone that that basically goes with you. It's similar to Pokemon Go, which I've never actually played, but I do remember when that came out. And hey, I remember I was uh, in Little Rock hanging out with you and we were watching people play. I had some event that was happening. And you can go like catch Pokemon. Oh, yeah. But in a similar fashion, Pikmin Bloom also utilizes that same technology, that augmented mm-hmm. reality is wherever you mm-hmm. are. You can go and like find fruits and other Pikmin seedlings because they grow from pots and their plants and then they mm-hmm. grow and they help you and you 
acquire as many as you can and they go off and they go and fight giant evil mushrooms. I say I, they're not evil. I say they're evil because I hate mushrooms, but they will go and attack mushrooms and you go acquire more fruit and then you plant flowers wherever you go. You, you can do that. Mm-hmm. You can plant flowers and it's, it's, it's fun. It's time consuming. It's something where it also tracks like how many steps you take, because that also makes the other Pikmin that you have grow. Uh, or wow. their their friendship level for you because they follow you mm-hmm. around I'm like oh we love you you give them nectar and it's i guess maybe the advanced version also of having a tamagotchi or a mm-hmm. giga pet or nice. whatever you have or had mm-hmm. um it's been fun really i've been enjoying it i've been playing it since friday i told my sister about it because she's the one who actually introduced me to pikmin many years ago when i think when she mm-hmm. had a gamecube or whatever system it came out on and sh- now she's addicted to it I've advanced much further than her. Granted, I've been playing a, maybe a couple of days longer than her, but I also do a lot more walking because of my job. So I'm able to like. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm I'm having a ball with it. So I'm recommending it to people, and because it's it's new, like it just came out like a couple like sometime last week, and mm-hmm. now it's even being advertised. Like it's like a sponsored top trending thing on Twitter sometimes. So I'm like, yep, I'm all in. This is my thing. Like I know. Animal Crossing was huge because it got you <laughs> and now this Pikmin Bloom just came out and, and I feel it's more accessible because you can put it on your phone, whereas uh, Animal Crossing, you need a, you know, a device, which I don't have. So I'm sure if I did, I probably wouldn't be playing it just like you. So, mm-hmm. um, but pick, and it's not a judgment. I, I feel like you, <laughs> I felt like your response was like, uh-huh. Yeah, I hear you. But it was not that it wasn't meant in that way. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that. I did not take that as judgmental. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. I, I felt like there was judgment there, but I'm happy mm-hmm. that you have a game and now I have one too. Not that I didn't have them before because I was playing Gardenscapes, but I haven't been playing that as much because I've been playing with my Pikmin. So uh, that is my recommendation. Go check that out. Go download it. And I mean, maybe it'll, it'll for those who are like, oh, I don't want to go take a walk. It will be a good encouragement to go take a walk because then you can go downtown or go, or go to the park. And sometimes there are these like giant flowers in the game that need to be bloomed. And the only way they do that is if you plant flowers around that giant flower. So I did that today at the park and I got to see a flower bloom and I was so excited. And then you get rewarded with like extra, like super fruits that your, your Pikmin really love to eat. So yeah, Pikmin bloom, I think on pretty much all mobile devices, your Androids and iPhones, iOS devices, I guess, I don't know, but go get it. It's great. So Next thing, or yeah, second to last is um, I'll go first with what I'm grateful for in my my moment of of gratefulness. Uh, I actually got two things. First, I have to say I am very grateful for lactate milk because as we get older, uh, and apparently we're not supposed to be drinking moo moo juice or or cow juice. So Mm -hmm. with lactate milk, I can happily eat as many bowls of cereal as my my heart desires without the issues of like stomach cramps and terrible gas Mm -hmm. and just just the i don't know knockings of death or something i don't know it's it's uncomfortable but i'm so grateful for for lactate milk and and almond milk too because that's what i put my coffee or when i Mm -hmm. go to duncan so love it lactate milk grateful for the other thing i'm grateful for is another shout out to patreon because for the patrons that do support me, I thank you so much because I, I happen to just be in need of just like just ten dollars. And now I'm like, mm-hmm. well, let me go check my Patreon real quick. All right, I've got some money over there. So I thank you so much for continuing to to I don't know, just donate what you can because just that little bit got me through. So I needed a sandwich, <laughs> but no, I, I uh, <laughs> like, I think one of my accounts was like in uh, danger of being overdrafted. So I was mm-hmm. able to just transfer some money over real quick because like, where can I get mm-hmm. money fast? Like I, it's, it's not enough time to go like, you know, go sell a leg or something. So I was able <laughs> to do that. And I thank you. I can't thank you enough. So if you're thinking of being a patron, <laughs> even a dollar helps, honestly, really, truly. Thank you so much. So I'm grateful to my patrons and I believe I have four right now. And um, 
I didn't want to name them all because and I know there's only four, but I can't remember who the fourth one is. So I don't want to like name three and not the fourth one. But still, I'm so, so thankful. Thank you very much. I love it. I am grateful for National Novel Writing Month, mm. which is happening now. It's every November from November 1st through the 30th where writers all over the world are challenged to write 50,000 words in, in those 30 days. And I have been doing it for like 13 or 14 years. The past couple of years uh, has been off and on. So it's hard to remember if it's 13 or 14 or maybe 15. I don't remember, but it's been a long time and I look forward to it every year and I'm very excited to be part of it this year. And I'm already seeing some huge gains. Um, it just reminds me of what I can do, what I'm capable of doing. You said gains, like huge gains? Gains, yeah. Okay, just checking. Just huge gains. Like I'm, a, like I'm already ahead of where I'm that quote supposed to be Good. in the word count goal. I'm, you know, making some, just some, lots of really good progress in this book of mine that I've been working on for a long time mm-hmm. and have been trying to work on it this year and just haven't really, haven't really been able to, to, to make big moves on it. Like I've wanted to. So I'm doing really well in it and I'm just grateful for it. Cause like I said, it just always kind of reconnects me to the writing life that I say I want. And then, you know, mm-hmm life gets in the way and things, but I'm, I'm back on it now and it's really, really working out really well. And yeah, I'm just really grateful for it. I'm glad because you, you've to me are definitely are a, uh, a nano vet for, you know, yeah. Yeah. for doing it so many years and having that experience, like, okay, I know what we're in for and what we're doing. And, and we, I mean, we talked about this off air before several times. So, and just how you're, you're excited for it and get ready for it. And, yeah, I, I continue to applaud you for doing it each and every year and and all the things that you get out of it each time. So and the community that you're mm-hmm. part of. Because mm-hmm. it is it is a huge I community didn't mention that. that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the community locally, globally, uh, just uh, it just that completely adds to the experience. And you know, I've kept in touch with a lot of the the writers and um, like even just outside of Nano, and we're mm-hmm. friends, and I mean, it's just awesome. Couldn't, mm-hmm. couldn't have probably wouldn't have met them outside of Nano either. So it's awesome, right? It truly is, and I mean, and you're putting good into the world too by doing mm-hmm. it because mm-hmm. we all need art. We need it. We thrive. Yes. Like you, I can't, agree. you can't spell Earth without art. So there you go. That's right. <laughs> All right. So do you have any shout outs uh, or places to be found that you would like to be found if you want to be found? No shout outs today, but if you'd like to find me and follow me on the Twitters, you can find me at I am K Hinton. All right. And I'll give a shout out to, to Dan. He gave me some really good encouraging words uh, a while back and he's, he's one who, I think can't wait for me to leave the current job that I'm in now because he knows that I'll be on to bigger and brighter things, but shout out to Dan. So, so thanks for your support, ongoing support, listening and sharing. He's, he's definitely one that, that does share it with people. So thank you so much. Um, as well as everybody else. I know there are other people that do it too, but giving him a shout out, but follow me on all things at Indube and go to indube.com. Tell someone you value that you value them. Live without regrets and live for the folks you love. Please wash your legs, your face, the bottoms of your feet, the undersides of your dishes, get vaccinated, get your boosters. And I guess, I don't know, get the pill too. Hey, if you want, I guess there's a, there's a new uh, COVID pill that I guess you could take. So if you get COVID, you can take it and it keeps you from being hospitalized and die. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in the meantime, continue to wear your mask. And uh, I've been your benevolent host, T. Sterling Watson. And remember, if the world didn't suck, we'd all fall off. No. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. Christmas. You said it too early. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. No, wait. It's fine. It's November. We're good. We're good. Ho, 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 ho. Okay.
It's after things. It's after <laughs> Halloween. We're good. We're good. Gotcha, gotcha. This is a close. That was a really close one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Indu podcast, which was recorded from the south side of Wakanda in Little New Indubia on the corner of Tachaka and MLK Drive, and is part of the Indu Network. Want more Indu? Follow on Instagram and Twitter at Indu, and on Facebook at Indu Pod. You can contact us and send Ask Indu questions by emailing indupod at gmail.com. Want to support or donate? Find the T Public Store or become a patron on Patreon, where subscribing gives you perks and extra things from the Indube Network. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and share the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, Podbean, and wherever else podcasts are found. And of course, visit Indube.com for all of this and much more. Thank you so much for letting us entertain, enlighten, and provide an auditory escape with knowledge and nonsense. Until next time. Use your words, Chief. <laughs> Good boy. This has been another 3SFX production.